Senator King. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Felkus, I wanted to start. I couldn't help but notice your title, Deputy Assistant Secretary, and tell a quick story. When I worked on the Senate staff some years ago, I was setting up hearings such as this, and I called the administration one day and asked for a witness on a particular topic, and the, uh, the fellow said, we're sending you a Deputy Undersecretary or some, some long title, and I said, well, I don't really know what those titles mean. Who is this guy? And the fellow gave me an answer, which if I ever write a book about Washington will probably be the title. He said, he's at the highest level where they still know anything. <laughs> and I realized that you're at that level and I'm now above it. So <laughs> just, just to be clear, uh, that's an absolutely true story. Um, Mr. Haddock and Ms. Sweeney, why shouldn't the, the royalties on gold or lithium or anything else be the same as oil and gas? What's the difference? Please be brief in your answer. Senator, for, for example, the, the royalty on oil and gas goes back to the wellhead. It takes out all processing and transportation costs after the wellhead. Our minerals are like that in the sense when they come out of the mine, they go through a multi-billion dollar processing plant. In but a so does oil and gas. It goes through refining and all of that. But the royalty isn't charged on the value of the gasoline. It's charged on the value of the oil well, of we, the wellhead. Would you accept that as a, as a standard? That, it, that what, what, we, what, we're, what we're advocating is a net royalty like the Nevada Net Proceeds well, of Mine Royalty, which well, does that, Senator. Well, my problem with the word net is I remember learning from Mario Puzo, the author of uh, The Godfather, <laughs> never take a percentage of the net because you don't have any control over the accounting. Uh, isn't there, uh, is, there, is there a way to measure this? I mean, I'm, I worry that that your companies, with all due respect, will be doing their accounting in such a way that there's never a net, just like there's never a net on a Hollywood movie, as Puzo <laughs> learned to his regret. Senator, my, my answer to that is simple, which is if it actually tracks the Nevada net proceeds of mine tax, Nevada has a great tracker to be able to audit and confirm it, but even, even more important than that, those are also elements that go into your federal tax return, your corporate tax return, and a company like Barrick we have the IRS in our office every quarter confirming our tax returns, and when our tax return is filed, it, it's audited. So, so they're I, the same numbers. Ms. Sweeney, you, you, similar, you're okay with a net, a, a net royalty? Yes. NMA has been on record as supporting a, a reasonable net royalty, yes. Uh, and I didn't want to be clear. I, I believe strongly that we have to support and, in fact, move forward with mining in this country. I, I said a couple of years ago, you can't love EVs and hate lithium mines. Uh, to my surprise, that turned into almost a billboard online. Uh, Ms. Sweeney, you may have had something to do with that, but in any case. Uh, so I understand that. We, we have to talk about permitting reform. I'm surprised that hasn't come up today. Isn't that a part of this discussion, to be sure? That, because we can't afford 14 years to permit a lithium mine uh, to support the EV industry. 85% of the lithium we're now using comes from China. That is downright dangerous. We, we wholly agree that permitting reform is an important aspect of what we need to do to be able to secure our supply chain. When a new mine is being permitted, is there any requirement for a cleanup fund to be guaranteed as part of the permitting process? Usually that's often the case in any kind of permitting of a major development. There, there is, Senator. We, in, we have uh, bonding requirements. Um, Dr. Felgus has said that the bonding in Nevada, the bonding in the United States is the best in the world. We also provide long-term funds for long-term... Uh, so, so the problem of abandoned mines and mines uh, is really for mines that are in the past, not, not new mines that are going online in the future. That's correct. I would appreciate it if you could share with the committee your thoughts on uh, permitting reform in terms of what changes might be required in uh, federal permitting re requirements. Obviously, state are all different. Uh, but that would be helpful to us if, if you have suggestions, because there are discussions going on on this committee about permitting reform that will go over into next year. So that's a bit of homework for you. Uh, Dr. Felgus, uh, changing the subject entirely. The last time we talked, I asked you about the administration's position on the RISE Act, uh, revenues for offshore wind to match revenues for uh, oil and gas. Uh, can you tell me today whether uh, that is something you can support? Uh, we are certainly open to the discussion. I think a lot of the question is where would the revenues go and what would they be used for? But you would support some some 
revenue uh, uh, scheme that would apply to offshore wind development as well as, uh, just as oil and gas does? Well, I can't speak for the administration at this moment, but certainly, as I said, we're welcome, uh, we welcome additional discussions on that. I wel we welcome the discussion. That's a pretty clever way to avoid an answer. Thank you, Dr. Felvis. I appreciate it. Thank you all very much.